everybody. I probably still want to be in this situation with all his feet on my line right here for a couple yards off. Because if he starts stepping out right away, he has control. And I'm up here at the six. It opens up the shift. He can bend it around. It's too easy for him. And also, it will kill your reaction time. If he hits a rocket right at me, I have very little time to actually react to the ball from all the way up on the six yard box. So I'd want to be a little bit, a couple yards off my line, playing it just as you would, normal shot. And when you actually want to step, if he takes a big touch in, now you step, step, step with this ball right here. I would just come out, claim that myself, going the other way. So if he takes a little more of a control touch here, I can take a step now. So now right here, we're a little closer. The chip is still possibly going to be on, but it's just something that you have to live with as a goalkeeper in a 1v1 situation. But right when he gets the ball back on his feet, you need to be set again. Because if I'm still taking a touch out when the ball's on his feet and he shoots it, I have no chance of making the save unless he hits it right at me. You can't get a plant foot. You can't make a dive. You're just going to be stuck on your ground. So he comes here, takes a touch. I'm set. If he takes a shot, we'll go over with actually how you deal with this in a few minutes. So if he's here and now say for whatever reason, our useless defenders are not pressuring him and he's taking really small touches, you still want to just Really small shuffle the ground. You don't want to start, again, be lunging out at the ball in this situation. It's gonna be easy for him to tuck it away. So that's more or less like how you guys want to actually approach the ball. Again, we're gonna go into a lot more detail in a second. And the other thing you gotta focus on is your actual stance. So when he's back at the 18, handling this like a normal shot, right here, I'm gonna be a little more upright. If you're more upright, if you just move laterally, you can extend a little bit easier. You don't really have to worry about these low balls around your ankles or in the corners as much. So you can be a little more upright. But when we start coming in, the more he comes in, the more you want to get your body lower, the more you want to get your hands lower. Because right here, it's very difficult if you stay up for the chip you in the situation. You can try to tuck it, so get your hands low, feet low, body low. It's a lot easier to be covering all the low balls, which is the real threat. Once you guys get one breakaway, one option to attack what happens is trying to get into you. Getting the attackers will attempt this when they're in a full sprint because this way they can use their momentum to their advantage. In this situation, it's extremely important that you move your body weight forward. So if you can be a quick and explosive first step, once you realize the attacker is trying to take the ball down, if you are off balance, you have no chance of making the play in this Like we went over before, you also need to have your set position to be low because you have to collect the ball off the ground. When attempting to take the ball off the attacker's foot, one of the hardest things to remember is to not aim for the actual ball. If you aim for the actual ball, the smallest touch by the attacker will put it out of your reach. You want to put your hand about a yard in front of the ball's path. This way, if the attacker gets another touch on the ball, you'll still be making the save. Of course, sometimes the striker will recognize that you are going to claim the ball with your hands and try to pull. In this situation, I like to swing my feet around to try to make a play on the ball. Often this will catch the striker off guard, and just getting the smallest touch on the ball can break up the play. If I fail to make contact with the ball, all I'm trying to do is get my feet under me as quickly as possible and then dive in towards the ball hoping the striker kicks the ball and setting up the shot. While this isn't an ideal situation, it is better than having the striker just watch you dive by and then scoring an easy open ball. common ways that you see goalkeepers save one-on-ones is a kick or split save. So for this one thing is you do have to be flexible. If you guys don't train all the time, you don't play, and you try doing this, you're going to tear something, you're going to yourself. So you have to look at your flexibility before you actually are able to respect or even start to work on this. So if he's coming in straight on and on a breakaway, you want to make a good save. It turns more into a guessing game for you because he has both sides of the goal and he his feet towards. So ideally, you'd want to actually be able to kind of pull him to an angle. So right here, say Remy, he's left-footed, he falls on his left foot. So it's going to be very tough for him to tuck this ball back across. So I'm just anticipating where he's going to strike the ball. And the second he starts to wind up to strike the ball, that's when I'm kicking my leg out to cover this near post right here. And you want to extend your arms out so you can cover anything a little bit higher. So with these split saves, the most important key to this is timing. You don't want to do it too early. So if he's still kind of in his wind up, not fully committed to the shot, and you start to go down in these split saves, he's just going to drag it back, tuck it into an open goal. But what you want to do is you don't want to make the movement. You want to stay up as long as possible until he has his head down, 
foot's about to make contact with the ball, and that's when you start to kick your leg out, kick your arms out. He's not gonna have time to change his decision, and you're just gonna have to hope that you have your feet and arms in the right place. And for these split saves, you wanna use your leg to actually kick out of whatever's covering your near post, because that's gonna be what is the easiest place for him to finish the ball. And it's gonna be, like I said earlier, it's gonna be more difficult for him to tuck it back. But also, just in case he does tuck it back, you still need your opposite arm out, and you wanna drag your trailing leg back. So just in case maybe he tries to cut it back on the ground, you can still make the save with that as well. When the attacker is coming in at an angle from out wide, you're going to want to use your leg covering the back post for a kick save, similar to what you'll see in these clips going over the block save. You're going to want to use these block saves when you and the attacker are both going to be reaching the ball right about at the same time. And again, the main goal is timing. You don't need to reach the ball first, but you want to get your foot right in front of the ball the second the attacker makes contact. And if you can get your foot close enough to the ball, it'll pretty much guarantee you a save. Another option in this situation is to go with your hands first. Again, just like with the block and kick saves, you will use your hands to cover the far post and your body to cover the near post. Personally, I think the block save is a much better option in these situations where you have cut the angle down well. One reason is because if you're a little late while diving, the chip will have a good chance of beating you. And the block save just allows you to stay up on your feet longer, which in turn helps you cover a larger percentage of the goal with your body. Also, the block save is just a more controlled movement, which will allow you to get your feet quicker to deal with the chip.